live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. Here at AWS reInvent 2018, a sixth year of the CUBE coverage, two sets, wall-to-wall -wall coverage here, two more sets in other locations, getting all the content, bringing it in, ingesting it into our video cloud service on AWS. Uh, Dave, a lot, of content, a lot of people don't know that we have that video cloud service, but we're going to have a lot of fun. Ton of content, ton of stories, and a special uh, analyst segment, Jerry Chen, guest here today, CUBE alumni, famous venture capitalist at Greylock Partners, um, partnering with Reid Hoffman, founder of LinkedIn, great set of partners at Greylock, great firm, tier one, doing a lot of great deals, rock set, recent one. Thanks, yeah. Um, you're also, um, on the record, six years ago, calling the shot yeah. at Babe Ruth, <laughs> predicting the future. Um, you got a good handle on it. You're at VMware, you're the cloud business, now you're making investments. You're seeing a lot of stuff on the landscape, certainly as a venture capitalist, you're funding projects. What better time now of innovation to actually put money to work, to take market share, sure. and then the big guys are getting bigger, they're creating more robust platforms. Game is changing big time. Yeah. I want to get your perspective, Dave. So, Jerry, what's your take on the announcements? Um, slew of announcements, which ones jumped out at you? You know, I, I think, so there's kind of two or three areas. There's definitely the, the hybrid cloud story with the outposts. There's a bunch of stuff around uh, ML and AI services, and a bunch of stuff on data and storage. And for me, I, I think what they're doing around the ML services, the um, prediction, the personalization, the text OCR, what Amazon's doing at that app layer is now creating AI building blocks for modern applications. So you want to do forecasting, you want to do personalization, you want to do um, text to uh, text analysis. You now have a simple API to basically build these modern AI powered apps. So he's doing to the app infrastructure layer what he's done to the, the cloud infrastructure layer by deconstructing the services. And API is obviously the center, that's what web services Correct. are. Um, so, so, so question for you is, do you see that um, the core cloud players, obviously Amazon, big lead, yeah. Google, Microsoft, others. Um, it's a winner take most, you called that six years ago, and that's true, but as they grow, there's going to be now new cloudification going on for business apps, new entrepreneurs coming to market. Who's vulnerable, who wins, who loses, as this evolution continues, because it's going to enable a lot of opportunity. Yeah, well, I mean, um, Amazon and cloud in general is going to create a lot of winners and losers, like you said. So I think you have uh, a shift of dollars from on-prem and old legacy vendors, database, storage, compute, to the cloud. So I think there's a shift of dollars that are winners and losers. But I think what's going to happen is, with all these services around AI, ML, and cloud as a distribution model, uh, a lot of applications are going to be rebuilt. So I think the entire application stack from all the big SaaS players, to uh, small SaaS companies, you're going to see this kind of a long tail of new SaaS applications being built on top of the cloud that you didn't see in the past. And the, and the ability to get to markets faster, so the question I have for you is, if you're an entrepreneur out there looking for funding and I'm, I can get to market quicker, you know, what, what is the, what's the playbook? And, and two, Jassy yeah. talked on stage about a new persona, a new kind of developer, one that can rethink and reimagine and reinvent something that someone else has already done. So, sure, sure. You know, if you're an entrepreneur, you got to need to take new to someone else's territory. So how does an entrepreneur go out and identify who's lunch to eat? So if I want to take down a company, you know, I got to have a strategy. I, how do I use the cloud to? I think it's always uh, a combination when you're a when you're founder, and you're thinking of attacking markets, combination of where are the dollars, uh, where can I create some advantage IP or, or advantage angle, and thirdly, where do I have a distribution advantage? How can I actually get my product to the hands of the users that differently? And so I think those are the three things. You find intersection of a great market, you have a, you have a unique angle, and you have a unique route to market, then you have a, a powerful story. So if you think about cloud changing the game, think about like uh, the mobile app ecosystem you know, on, for consumers. That also a new platform, a new distribution method, right, the mobile app stores. And so what happened, you had a new category of developers, mobile developers, creating this long tail of thousands thousand apps for everything from groceries to cars to like your fantasy football score. So I think you're going to see distribution in the cloud, making it easy to get your apps out there. You're going to see a bunch of new markets open up because we're seeing verticals like healthcare, construction, 
uh, financial services that didn't have special apps beforehand be disrupted with technology, right? Autodesk just bought um, PlanGrid for $800 million. I mean, that's unheard of, construction software company. <laughs> so you're going to see a bunch of new verticals like that be opened up, and then I, I think with this cloud technology, with compute, storage, um, network becomes free, and you have this AI layer on top of it, you can power these new applications using AI that I think are, is pretty damn exciting. Yeah, so you described this sort of, we, we went from client server to the cloud, yeah. brought a whole bunch of new app providers. Obviously Salesforce was there, but Workday, ServiceNow. What you described is a set of composable digital services right. running on top of a cloud, so that's ripe for disruption. So, do I have to own my own data centers if I'm a big SaaS company? That, what uh, happens to those big guys? I don't think you have to own your, well, you don't have to own your, you don't have to own your own data center as a right. SaaS company. But you could if you wanted to, right? So, at some point in scale, a lot of the big players build their own data centers. Like, Airbnb is on Amazon, but Dropbox built their own storage off on Amazon early, then their own data center later. Uber has their own data center, right? So you can argue that at some point in scale, it makes sense to build your own, so you don't need to be on Amazon or Google or Azure to start, yeah. but it does give you a, a head start. Now the question is, in the future, can you build a, a SaaS application entirely on Amazon, Azure, or Google without any you know, custom code, right? Can you, can you hydrate what I call private SaaS? Yeah. Like a single instance of my SaaS application for you, John, or for you, Dave, that's your data, your workflow, your information personalized for you. So instead of this multi-tenant CRM system like Salesforce, I have a custom CRM, CRM system just for Dave, just for Jeff, yeah. just for Jerry, just for the queue, right? I think yes well, to that. I, it, think, well, I think that's definitely a trend I, it, I would see it, happening. It's what Infor is trying to do, right? Sure. Uh, to Charles Phillips is, uh, friends don't let friends build data centers, but you know, they still got a big loss in legacy there, but it's an interesting model focus on verticals or micro verticals or like a healthcare example that you're giving and a lot of potential. Well, for here's why I think, I think I like this because I think, and I said this before in theCUBE, maybe it's not the way, best way to say it is that if you look at the benefit of AI, yeah. data driven, the quality of the data and the power of the compute has to be there. AI will work well with all that stuff, but it's also specialized around the application's use case. Yeah. So you have specialism around the application but you don't have to build a full stack to do that. You can use a horizontally yeah. scalable cloud distribution system in your word, and then only create custom um, Work unique, unique workloads yeah. for the app where machine learning is involved, and AI, that's unique to the app, that's differentiation. That could be the business model or the utility. So, multi-tenancy could exist in theory at the scalable level, but unique at the top of the level. So yes, I would say I'd want that hosted in yeah. the most customized, agile, flexible way. So I would argue that that's the scenario. I think that's the future. I mean, one of my, I think you were saying, Dave, like, friends don't let friends build data centers anymore. You know, it, <laughs> it's, it's um, you probably don't need to build a data center anymore because you can actually build your own application on top of one of the one of the two or three large cloud providers. So it'd be interesting to see what happens in the next three, four years. We're going to see kind of, um, uh, what is it, a thousand flowers bloom of, of different apps. Not everyone's going to make it, right. not everyone's going to be a huge uh, Salesforce-like outcome, but there'll be a bunch of applications out there. And, uh, and the, the, the IoT stuff is interesting to me, so we, sure. uh, observing a lot of what the IT guys are doing, it reminds me of people trying to make the Windows mobile phone. Yeah. It's just trying to force IT standards down sure. to IoT. What I've seen from AWS today is a more of a bottoms-up approach. Build applications for you know, uh, operations technology people which I think is the, the right way to go. I, what are you seeing in IoT, IoT apps? What, what, what's the formula there? I think what Amazon now say with their, their time series database, right? Yeah, their time um, stream, time stream uh, prediction engine, plus their outpost um, offering yeah. with the VMware themselves, you're really seeing a combination of IoT and Edge, right? And yeah. so the whole idea is, uh, one, there's a bunch of use cases for time series and IoT, because sensor data, cameras, self-driving cars, drones, et cetera. There's this more data coming at you, and yeah. that's all. And eventually. Splunk has proven that, big time. Correct, Splunk's a you know, 18 billion market cap company, all on time series data. But number two, what's happening is, it's not necessarily centralized data, right? It's, it's happening at the edge, your, your self-driving yeah. car, your cell phone, et cetera. So, Outpost is really a way for Amazon to get closer to the edge by pushing their compute towards your data center, towards a remote office, branch office, 
um, and get closer to where the data is. So I, I think that'll be super interesting. Well, the elastic inference engine is critical. Oh, yeah. Now we got elasticity around inference, and then they got the chipset that worked, uh, um, uh, Inferentia, that yeah. can work with the elastic surface. Yeah. That's a powerful combination. Oh, the, the AI um, plumbing war between you know, Google and TensorFlow as technology versus like PyTorch, Google TPUs, versus you know, what Amazon's doing with inference chips today, uh, which is what I'm, I'm sure Microsoft or else is doing, is uh, fascinating to watch in terms of how you had a kind of a Intel, NVIDIA duopoly for a long time, and now we have Intel, NVIDIA, and then you know, everyone from Amazon, Google, Microsoft doing their own silicon. It's, yeah. it's pretty fascinating. What was the watch. stat, you said 85% of the TensorFlow, cloud TensorFlow is running on AWS? Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Big also, said uh, Aurora's, um, customers' logos fly doubled. But let's break down real quick to end the segment with the key areas that we see going on, at least from my perspective. I want to get your reaction. Storage, major disruption. He emphasized a lot of that in the keynote. Yeah. Spent a lot of time on stores. Actually, I think more than EC2, if you look at it. Um, yeah. Two, databases, database war. Storage reconfiguration, and a holy trinity yeah. of networking, storage, and compute that's evolving. Databases, SageMaker, machine learning all there, and then over the top, yesterday's announcement of satellite as a service, <laughs> yeah. that essentially kills the edge of the network, because <laughs> there is no edge if we have space satellites shooting connectivity to yeah. any device. The world is, no, is now, there's no more edge, it's everywhere. Yeah. So, your thoughts, those areas. Which one pops out as the, the most surprising or most relevant? I, I think it's, it's consistent with Amazon strategy. On the lowest layer, they try and drive the cost to zero. So on storage, cheaper, 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 they're driving the, the bottom layer to zero to get all your data. I think the second thing in the database layer, it makes sense, it's not open source, right? Time scale or time series is not, time stream's not, a, their open source database is their own. So open source, low cost, the lowest layer. Their database stuff is mostly their own, Aurora, Dynamo, time stream, right? Because th there's some level lock in there, which I think customers are worried about, so that's, Clever, it's not by accident, that's yeah. all proprietary. And then ML services, on top of that, that's all cares for developers, and it's API lock-in. So clearly, low cost open source at the bottom, proprietary yeah. data services that they're trying to own, and then APIs on top of it. Yeah. And so the higher up in the stack, the more and more Amazon you look, the more and more Amazon you have to adopt as, as kind of a lock-in stack. So it's, it's a brilliant strategy the guys have been executing for the past six, seven years, as you guys have seen firsthand. Um, I think the most exciting thing, the most shocking thing to me is uh, this move towards kind of this, this battle for the AI front, this ML AI front. I think we saw like ML is the new the, uh, sequel, right? Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, that's the new war, right? Well, Against Amazon, Google, yeah. and, and that's uh, going to be the future. And that's the future of applications, because this is right. table yeah, but, things. But you're right on, it's a knife fight for the data, and then you layer on machine intelligence on top of that, yeah. and you get cloud scale, and that's the innovation engine. Yeah in the next 10 years. All right, Jerry Chen just unpacked the uh, state of the union of cloud. Of course, as an investor, I got to ask the final question. How are you investing to take advantage of this yeah. wave versus being on the wrong side of history? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I have frameworks for everything. There's a framework on how to tap the cloud vendors. And uh, so I'm looking at a couple things. One, a seams in between the clouds, right, or in between services, because they can't do everything well, and they're the, kind of these large continents right, Amazon, Google, uh, Azure. So I'm looking for scenes between the three of them. I'm looking for uh, two deep areas of IP that they're not going into, that you actually have proprietary tap. And then um, verticals of data, like source of the data or, or workflows that these guys are in great. And then finally, kind of cross data, cross cloud solutions. So right. something that gives you the ability to run on-prem, off-prem, Microsoft, yeah. Google, Azure. Yeah, fill in the white spaces that are big white spaces. They're big white and spaces. And then hope that could develop into, good. Jerry Chen, partner at Greylock Partners, formerly VMware, part of the V-Mafia, friend of theCUBE, great, great guest analysis here with Dave Vellante and John Furrier. Thanks for watching us. Stay with us, more live coverage. Day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage at reInvent. 52,000 people, the whole industry's here. You can see the formations, we're getting all the data, we're bringing it to you. Stay with us. <laughs>